welcome back to my channel glad you can join me today we're going to edit a wildlife photo in NX Studio now I've already done five tutorials on using NX Studio from first impressions to how to use just about every function in NX Studio editing a Milky Way photo editing JPEGs in NX Studio because it's very different to editing a raw file so today we're going to edit a wildlife photo because quite a few people have messaged me saying could you show us how you edit a wildlife photo because editing a wildlife photo is very different compared to editing a sunrise sunset or just a daytime image a sunrise or a sunset we can really go to town on the image add some saturation add some contrast add some dehaze to really make the image pop whereas a wildlife photo we've got to keep it natural so we're very limited in what we can do so let's jump in now to this image you can see here this is a very small wallaby it was taken around seven o'clock in the morning the nice morning light is shining on it on the right hand side here but before we jump into it i just want to show you something that you mightn't be aware of we go up to the menus up here on the top left we have all these little icons here one of them is your thumbnail viewer now you can see the thumbnail viewer at the moment is on the left hand pane a lot of people think that they're just stuck to having the thumbnail viewer down the bottom but you can have it on the left hand side as well see if i click on it here it says show or hide so if i click show it but it says display film strip horizontally down the bottom here or vertically so you can have it on the side or down the bottom if you don't want it all you just click on it it just makes life a lot easier in lightroom all you've got is little arrows so if you click the arrow it just auto hides if you want to see it you just click on the arrow it just pops up for a little while here we can totally get rid of it and i quite like that so now the first thing i do with wildlife images is i crop the image unlike my landscape photos because sometimes i say like i'm very careful on landscape images when i'm going to crop because i don't know if i'm going to make them into a panoramic image like 16 by 9 or whatever so i try to leave it as full as possible unless i've got a real good idea of what i want i like cropping in straight away that's just the way i do it so we come up here to the crop tool and watch what happens when we click on the crop tool at the start and you see the image is darkened that just helps you when you run the crop tool around the image so we've got here the original value we have free crop if we come down here we have postcard three by two which is six by four or we have all the way down the bottom down here five by four which is eight by ten so if we say we wanted to fix to a six by four we click postcard and now we just select from where we want down the bottom here but look can you see what happens when i click on it it's cropping in a landscape orientation i don't want that i want portrait all we do is underneath the postcard symbol here there's a little button here orientate the crop if i click on that now it's going to send me into portrait orientation so i'll just going to bring it up a little bit more but before i go any further than here can you see down the bottom here we have the leg of the wallaby and it's crossing over its chest i don't want that intersection at the bottom there i'm just going to raise it up a little bit just so that we don't see that crossover that's a personal liking for me i just don't want to see that now i can bring it back down a little bit make it more a bit more symmetric that looks really nice to me now all i do is hit enter that's it there beautiful now we've got our image now we start with the basic editing panels so we have picture control white balance your brightness saturation and all that let's do the picture control first i quite like this some people just skip on this picture controls are there to help you remember a raw file isn't affected by picture controls on the camera but using the picture profiles gives you an idea of what the image would look like edited this is why i talk about so much that i like using picture controls on my camera because i do so much youtube material i shoot in jpeg and in raw the jpeg images have already got this picture profile the raws don't but the thumbnail view at the back even if i was shooting just in raw which gives me an idea of what the image would look like so we have here all the values it says the recorded value on the camera was landscape but if we click along here see we have standard neutral vivid monochrome portrait watch what happens when i click on the portrait mode look at that it just bounces out the image can you see that the highlights and the shadows are much more even 
why not use something that's there to help you? Now this is looking much better, but understand the portrait profile just tones the image down a bit. It just removes some of that contrast. So we're going to have to add a little bit of contrast, but I like it because now my background is much more even. If I go back here to landscape, can you see how my background now is quite dark towards the top of the image, but look down the bottom right hand corner. It's quite bright. It's quite uneven. And this would be very hard to balance out in NX Studio because remember, NX Studio doesn't have ND grad filters. It doesn't have brush tools and all that. So you've got to try to find a way to even out your image. It's there. Let's use it. We'll come back to portrait. Now that looks quite nice. Now we go to white balance. Because it was shot quite early in the morning, I want to add a little bit of that warmth of the sun to it. See at the moment here, it's quite flat. I want to add a bit of warmth. So we'll just slide the white balance slider up a little bit. Just add a bit more. There, that's it. Very nice. The next panels are exposure compensation and active delighting. For landscapes, I don't mind using active delighting, but in wildlife, I do. I want as little noise as possible in my image. Active delighting, what it does is balances out your highlights and your shadows. Do I need it here? No, I don't. So now we're back to our original image. So now we click on the brightness and color panel. We have brightness, contrast, saturation. It's a little bit bright. Remember, it's a bit early in the morning. We don't need the image too bright. That looks much better. We'll add just a little bit of contrast. Now remember, one of my bugbears in this program is that it's slow. I've upgraded my computer. It's now an i7 with 32 megs of RAM, a very fast video card, and it's still slow. This program is still slow at rendering what I'm editing. Remember this and take your time. Don't bring those sliders too quickly across. Just take it a little bit. Wait a couple of seconds. It's a problem. Nikon still haven't fixed it with an update. Now we're just going to add a bit more saturation. I'm pretty happy with that. We have highlight protection, shadow protection, and delighting for HS. Highlight protection is just controlling your highlights. In Lightroom, it starts from zero, and you can go into the minus or into the plus. In NX Studio, you can only reduce your highlights. You can't increase your highlights. The same has shadow protection. So when you're taking the slider to the right, you're decreasing your highlights. So you're trying to blend the highlights more. The same with your shadows. You're actually decreasing the amount of shadows you have in your image. We'll just bring the highlight protection up just a little bit. Now watch what happens when we click on shadow protection. Can you see now that we're losing the shadows? I don't want that. You still want a separation. You still want to show light and dark. So we'll just bring it all the way just about back there. That's it. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm looking at the image now. It's a little bit too bright for me. So we'll just reduce the brightness a little bit. There. I'm actually quite happy with that. If I just click on the image here, it gives me a 100% view so I can see if there's any noise in the background. And look at that. There's hardly any noise here. You can just see it a little bit. Now with this 100% view, I can go and reduce a bit of noise. So we come up here to adjust detail. Bring it up here. And now we have the intensity of the noise. We could just bring it up a little bit. Look at that. That is just so nice. And we haven't lost that much sharpness in the image, which is very good. We close that panel down. Can you see there's a couple of spots up here? We have one in the top left, one near the top right, and one just between its ears here. And you see these spots? It was just scratching itself and it's just a little bit of fluff from its fur that's just gone into the morning air. Now it's very easy to reduce this that this program has is a removal brush, just like the spot removal brush in Lightroom. So we click on 100% and we just move along. We'll do the top right here first. And we come up here, touch up, we scroll it up and we click on the little band-aid here. See the band-aid's open. And now what we do is just increase or decrease the size of the brush. And we just click on it. Now we can remove, you can see I've got the little circle here. I just click on it, that's it. It's gone. Now I can just scroll around, go back up to the left up here, because I know there's one on the left, bring it up to the top. There it is up the top here. We grab that one. Look at that. It's nicely gone. Now we just get the one from between the ears. There, that's it. Now we just click out of it, go back to our full view. And I can see there's just one here, just between, just be beside the ears again. So we click on it again, click on the brush, gone, beautiful. When we finish the brush tool, we just have to click on that band-aid or else we stay in that panel. 
And that's it. I'm very happy with this image. Now let's see what it looks like before and after because NX Studio has this function. We come up here to the little panel up here, the little icon where it shows switch to before and after view. So we click on it. Now these two images look the same because it is at the moment the same image. We have to come in the middle here to that little icon. It says restore before and after image to its natural state. So we click on it. The left image is our original raw file and the right image is our edited. There is a different view because the left image hasn't been cropped, the right has been cropped. But look at it, doesn't that look so nice? And it's very realistic. And this is how I edit my wildlife images. I don't over edit them. Sometimes I push the boundaries when I'm editing a sunrise or a sunset, still trying to keep it real, but I push the boundaries sometimes. Here for wildlife, I don't. I never push the boundaries. All we have to do now is just export our image just like we do in Adobe Lightroom. So I hope this tutorial has been of value to you. Now you can see how I edit my wildlife images. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy your wildlife photography, and I'll see you next time.